I'm coming to you from the future to let you know that we're gonna be dry ice blasting my DeLorean. So many of you guys commented in the last DeLorean video that you wanted to see this crazy process. So I called my friend Jason from Chicago Auto Pros to see if he'd be down. Hey dude, what do you think about dry ice blasting my DeLorean? I'd be down for that. Now we're currently halfway done with this two day process and I'm really excited to show you guys the real world of dry ice blasting because I think so many of those viral dry ice videos only show you the good stuff and I'm gonna show you everything. I have holes in my frame. So in a moment, we're gonna go back in time to strip down the entire steering suspension and brake system. But before we do that, let me take a moment to strip down and show you guys my new LSC breast cancer awareness shirt. So what you're looking at is a brand new limited time t-shirt on legitstreetcars.com. And since October is breast cancer awareness month, I'm raising money for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. This foundation supports those affected by breast cancer with basic needs and provides funding for important research to help treat and eventually cure this disease that hurts so many. So the shirts are $35 and 100% of your purchase price goes directly to that foundation. So click on the link down below. And while you're there, the entire rest of the site is 10% off. Jason and the boys come in two days with the dry ice machine. I have to go pick up this gigantic diesel air compressor and 300 pounds of dry ice in the van. All right, so let's get to work. We got to take everything apart. Wheels are coming off, entire suspension, brakes, steering, Everything is coming down right now. It's going down. Our freshly powder coated wheels, they're so nice. Look at the rear brakes on a DeLorean. What in the world is going on? This is the emergency brake system right here. This is the regular brake caliper. A little complicated and weird, but I'll take it. We're gonna start this madness with removing this rear shock and spring assembly. Sure, this will just come right out. Oh wow, I wasn't kidding. I was sure it was gonna come right out. That's that's nice. I sprayed everything with penetrating oil like a few weeks ago, so that's good. Let's see if we can pry this nasty old shock out. There we go. There are so many washers, this is crazy. Look at how many washers, DeLorean. What, what do you got going on here? Oh yeah, that's not happening. This nut's gonna turn with the whole thing. All right, time to get violent. I forgot to spray the nut at the top of the shock. This thing is basically fused together. This will help. Now because this is fiberglass and we're gonna be using fire, we want to protect that, so let's take it an old license plate, put it in there like that, and we've made ourselves a little shield. All right, whoo, and a fan at the same time. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. We did it. Oh my gosh, I have like 4,000 more fasteners to take apart on this car. This is gonna be fun. Let me quite the workout too. This isn't a traditional quick strut, by the way. The spring right there is resting up against the frame. So if we just simply undo the nut, it's gonna shoot out, but there's not much tension on the spring at all. So we just have the shock under a jack. Now we can loosen that up. Okay. All right, so nut's gone. And now we will release by lowering. There we go. All right, nice and uneventful. That's what you want from a coil spring. There's our spring and our shock. Horrible condition. You guys wanna see what I'm replacing these with eventually? Oh, look at these beauties right here. So not only is this gonna make the car handle much better, but our ride height will be adjustable and I'm going low, really low. All right, now I'm removing the brake line and it broke loose. So that's nice. Okay. And I already disconnected it from the other end. So here is our crusty brake line. It's very, very intact though, just dirty. Let's release this parking brake now. There's a 10 millimeter nut on the bottom. No. Well, we're off to a wonderful start here. Get out. That'll do it. I can't get this out. This parking brake cable is not long for this world. There we go. Okay, add it to the list. Parking, brake, let's just get two times two. Next we have a gigantic nut that is totally not gonna be frozen in here. See, told you, it was fine. 10 millimeter down here, we're gonna try and remove this whole bracket. There it goes. All right, thank you, parking brake. Next we have some caliper bolts. I had to get really creative here with the tools. Oh, is it spinning? Yay, it's kind of spinning. Let's try the top one. Oh yeah, we're good. This is 
gonna come off, cool. Okay. Okay, let's pry this caliper off. There we go. Oh man, this is one gigantic caliper. It's, it's built like a tank. Just like the tanks in War Thunder, a totally epic top military action, free to play multiplayer game that's available on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Mac. Test your skills on the ground and pick from an insane collection of tanks, battle in the air with fighter planes and helicopters, and even on the sea with a naval fleet that's always ready for a fight. Their latest update, Sons of Attila, added a whole new fleet of unique Hungarian ground vehicles, and aerial battles have become even better thanks to their voice warning systems. The graphics are insane and dynamically change depending on lighting and a ton of other new products have been added. You have to check this out for yourself. And you know how much I love customizing vehicles. With War Thunder, you can do that too, but with tanks and planes and other cool toys. The game is so realistic and individual parts of the vehicle react to damage like if you puncture a fuel tank, it will leak out and eventually catch fire. The equipment spans from the early 20th century to present. The location in the game are super cool and because they are constantly updating the game you're sure to always find something new so download war thunder for free using the link in the video description box and all new players and those who haven't played war thunder in half a year or more will receive bonuses like rentals for the p40e-1 aircraft and m4 tanks for a week along with free unique skins a special decoration eagle of valor 100,000 silver lines three premium vehicles for free a week of premium accounts and even more. And the American bonus season will end soon, so hurry up, download the game with my link down below, and have fun. Now it's time for my favorite part. Beating the rotor off. Wow. Okay. That's, this isn't horrible at all. Look at that. Beautiful. Ooh, what does it say here? Oh, discard thickness. Okay, cool. It's in very prominent, thick, bold font. Thank you. DeLorean, whoever makes this rotor. How's this wheel bearing? Eh, that's not bad. Next up is the axle. We are gonna remove both axles and I cannot get a socket in here. So I'm just gonna spend eternity turning this with an open end wrench. And then on the transmission side, it's the same. So that's cool. It's gonna be so much fun. So anyway, imagine, I don't know, a half hour of this. Oh, wait a minute, it gets loose. All right, I'm exaggerating, maybe 25 minutes. This is where you just kind of blank out and go to your happy place. My happy place is working on an old DeLorean. So I'm already here. Where's your happy place? Okay, before I remove all of these, I have to leave one in so I can hold the hub, hold the axle, and then loosen these guys up. There we go. Okay, so I have all of these loose. Now we're good. I can loosen up this last bolt here. And the axle should come out. There we go. Okay, good deal. Yeah, good bearing. All right, here's our last bolt for the axle. These things are all super greasy. Look at this. Axle boot on the other side is torn. This one's torn. There we go. Okay. All right, axle number one. Oh, let's see. Oh, this got some weight to it, that's for sure. You can definitely use this for like close hand curls or something. Is that a real? Move in weightlifting? I don't know. Axle is out and I can't wait to see what the dry ice blast machine will do to this transmission. But for now we have two control arms and a spindle to remove. And then that way this entire section of the car is ready to be blasted. What do I got, a brand new DeLorean? That bolt is beautiful. Another good one. Wow, this one's just threaded right into the frame right here. So if this got stuck, oh man, I don't even want to think about it. Two more gigantic bolts left. Oh, these are beautiful. Thank you so much, DeLorean, so far. I mean, seriously, good hardware. All right, we officially have no hardware holding this in. There we go. Okay. Cool, so here is our spindle with the control arms and the bushings are in really good shape. Probably no need to replace those, but we'll have a better look once these come out. But yeah, I'm sending the control arms out to get sandblasted. We'll probably take care of the aluminum in-house. The knuckle's made of aluminum and I think we might be able to clean that up with the dry ice, but we're gonna find out. All right, this side is coming apart and we're doing this one a little bit differently. Lowering it down nice and easy by hand. Never tell you guys how much I hate coil springs. That's why I'm so glad we're going to coilovers. We don't have to mess around with compressing or anything, but we're good here. This is nice and loose. Now we can undo this. 
Look at this thick old pad from DeLorean. Hope we're retaining that. It's just too nice. Come on now. Oh, you guys want to hear something cool? Bad wheel bearing. Really bad wheel bearing. Number two coming out. All right, cool. Going in the pile. Back to the pile. With everything in the rear taken apart, we need to move on to the front. This whole big chunk needs to be removed, including the rack and including this nasty sway bar, which is one day going to look brand new again. So anyway, let's let's start with this. We have a nut and a washer to remove. Um, is this thing going to just come right out? Oh, that's nice. So there's that. There is a bushing in here as well. And it's in great shape, actually. And another bushing in there. Okay, perfect. And I got the other end loose too. There we go. Sway bar's out. Going in the van. Lots of parts are going in the van. Next, I want to remove this brake line. And when I was out in North Dakota, the other side came loose just like that. It was, it was kind of great. But we'll definitely be able to reuse these. You just need a cleaning, that's all. All right, little baby. Brake line coming off. Old hydroscopic brake fluid here. It's absorbed all of the moisture. Now I want to loosen up this tie rod. That was pretty uneventful. It takes me longer sometimes to get the nuts out of the sockets than actually like take it off the car. Little trick, if the pick doesn't work, just thread it back on, shimmy it off, and you're done. Pro tip. And another pro tip, thread this guy right back on because you're gonna wanna hit this out and you don't wanna destroy your threads. Then get a bigger hammer if the small one doesn't work. Then if that doesn't work, get out your air hammer. There we go. Air hammer always does the trick. Threads are good. Definitely need a new boot though. Yeah, it's turned into hard plastic at this point. Oh yeah, this joint's got some play. Oh, so we're gonna need to replace this anyway. So we definitely could have jacked up those threads. Now we can move this over yonder and we have really easy access to the caliper bolts. All right. Caliper bolts off. I'd say one of the most common questions in the very first DeLorean video when I had to take the other brake caliper off was why didn't I just take the pads out? Guys, do you do you see this? Maybe there's a better angle here. Do you, do you see what's going on here? These things are rusted in there like a lot. So getting these pins out and then trying to get these calipers out would have been a gigantic nightmare. Plus it was getting dark and I needed to get this thing on the trailer. So removing those two bolts and the line and then just prying it off like so. All right. That was much easier, much easier than messing around with these brake pads, especially because I'm replacing this entire caliper and rotor and everything. We're upgrading the brakes on this car. So the caliper needed to come off anyway, but go to that reveal video, go to the comment section. And you'll see new ones. Even after I put this out where everybody's like, just take the pads out. And then the wheel would have spun around because it was frozen. I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I get that that would happen, but this was easier. Path of least resistance, people. Now right, we have to get the cotter pin out of this castle, not for the upper ball joint now. Okay, that happens sometimes. They just break right off. Great. We're gonna cut this one off right now because we're replacing all these joints and the cotter pin's stuck in there and I don't have time for that. There we go. Split the nut in half. Goodbye, nut. Yeah. There we go. All right. Sometimes you just gotta get a little violent. Now we have cotter pin on the lower ball joint as well. Let's see if this one wants to come out. Do you want to come out, little buddy? Maybe. Maybe. Yes, I do. It's a smiley face. Look at that. Hello. He's English. I don't know what to tell you. Just what comes to mind. There we go. Oh, this one's playing nice, isn't it? You're a nice little castle nut. I'm going to nickname you Ca Cassidy. I'm really bad at nicknames. I usually just take the name and add like an E-Y or a Y at the end. My kids are not impressed with my ability to nickname things, and neither should you. I had a friend named Nick, and nicknamed him Nickname. I didn't know what else to say. Now that we have the nut off, we have to release the joint from the spindle. So we got this little doohickey. Ah, I don't know, he kind of makes a really scary noise. Call this the ball joint snapper outer. Now we can lift the old spindle off, and it goes in our pile of parts. Bad ball joint. Pretty much all the joints in this car are probably bad. Is this one bad? Well, it is now since I kind of sliced it up. No, it's not bad, but we're replacing it anyway, okay? Everything's getting replaced, all these joints. All right, so now we have to remove this upper control arm, and I think there's just one gigantic bolt that holds it in. Let's find out. Yep, that's it. Whoa, this thing is spinning nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's like chrome. Okay, washers, washers. I should remember that for the other side, not to drop all the washers. All right, so we're supporting our control arm right now. 
now we have the lower shock nut out. All right. With the spindle and the upper control arm gone, we have this supported with our screw jack. So we're gonna be removing the shock and we gotta heat this up. So we have a license plate to protect us. Because we have fiberglass. And we don't wanna burn that. Nice and easy now. Okay, so that's one of the nuts. It's a lock nut. Now we're just holding the shaft of the shock with a quarter drive and we can remove this upper shock nut. All right. Shocks out. You guys have seen me use this spring compressor before. Use this one on the Grand National. And these claws just go like so. All right, now that the spring is loose, we can disconnect this lower control arm here. All right, super good condition, long bolt out of the lower control arm. Now we get this out of the way. And we have our spring in our lower control arm. Now, let's release the tension on this thing right away. You don't want to leave coil springs bound up like this. It's dangerous. All right, there we go. One warning that I will issue with all seriousness is that springs are super, super dangerous. If you don't feel comfortable around springs, if you don't know how the suspension works, if you don't want to understand that springs can literally kill you, then just bring your car somewhere else because they are very, very dangerous. They can spring into action into your face. You don't want that. Oh, and also on the topic of springs, it is best to leave the control arms connected and compress the spring with everything assembled. But my spring compressor wasn't fitting with the upper control arm. So what I did was okay. But if you have a tool that fits in there, always release the spring pressure first. Got almost everything off the driver's side now. We just have the, the gigantic upper control arm bolt and it's not rusted. Yay. This is such a wonderful bolt. Look at that, look at that. Imagine, imagine though, had it been rusted inside of that long sleeve in the frame. That's something that could change a guy's entire project and the way they think of the car. That could fester hatred and anger in someone and potentially just, just ruin the whole experience for them. Oh yeah, we got lots of washers. This one's out, looking pretty nasty. Next in the removal process, we have the steering rack. So I've already disconnected the steering linkage and we have a couple bolts on the bottom. Now we just have to pry this thing off. All right, there goes this little contraption. Now the rack should come out the driver's side. Come on now. There we go. Here is a manual rack and pinion. So there is no power steering pump on this car at all. I had to take one of the clamps off. It was all rusty and crusty. Now there's still an oil inside of here, of course. Ooh, and it's got a really cool stamp. Made in England. Nice. New boots are in order new joints, new everything. All right, something else that I think is gonna give us a ton of room is removing this muffler. It actually had no clamp. So I just took off one little bracket and now it's super loose. Ow, ow, hurt my finger. Huh? Okay, but yeah, this muffler has definitely seen better days. So this is getting replaced. With the muffler out of the way, I removed a couple of bolts. So we could remove this little shield. It's seen better days, but look at the engine. Look at how nasty it is, but also look at how much more room we have to get to everything with the muffler out of the way. So we're definitely gonna try cleaning this up with the dry ice machine. And I'll be honest with you, I don't have much experience with the dry ice machine. I used a very small one about a year ago, and there's no chance that one could tackle this engine. So we'll see what Jason and the guys are bringing today. I've seen all those same viral videos that you guys have seen where it's just like a total transformation. It's just so dirty under here. I'm like, I'm skeptical. That's all I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a little skeptical at how good of a job this is going to do. We're going to find out. I think the last piece of the puzzle are these coolant tubes. So I've loosened all the clamps. This guy should come out. There we go. And we're going to try and clean up these aluminum tubes with the dry ice machine as well. Getting all new rubber. It's going to be sweet. This one's coming down. I'm sure I'm going to be taking something else apart, but for now, I think I've removed everything, everything we need to remove to get really good access with the dry ice blast machine. We're going to discover numbers and letters that have been covered for the last 40 something years. What in the world is that? Is that the number of the DeLorean? Is this number 1367? I don't know. We're going to find out, but soon we're going to be saying goodbye to nastiness like this and like this and so much more because of these guys. Hey! I just showed up out of nowhere with this <laughs> stainless steel contraption to match my stainless steel DeLorean. So yeah, it's gotta be good then, perfect. right? Yeah. So we have the guys, of course, from Chicago Auto Pros, Car Supplies Warehouse. And I picked some stuff up this morning to help with this. The LSC Express van was busy picking up 
this gigantic diesel powered air compressor and 300 pounds of dry ice. I haven't even taken a peek in this thing yet. There's dry ice. Okay, I wanna keep that closed though because we have a time limit. So we have about the next roughly eight hours to mint out this DeLorean as best as we can. In preparation for the dry ice, I have plastic wrapped off this section of the shop with all the tools. We've covered up the cabinets and the benches and everything with parts and more tools because this stuff supposedly gets everywhere, doesn't it? Okay. Now we gotta feed the machine what it wants. It's cold in here. Oh, it's negative 190 degrees. Three millimeter dry ice pellets going in. There we go. Now we gotta turn the air compressor on. Okay, so we're just gonna flip that on. Ignition. And take off. All right, cool. So just to fill you guys in on cost, this is 325 bucks for 24 hours. I have $240 worth of dry ice and the dry ice machine itself is like $40,000. And if you wanted to buy one of these, it'd be like another $40,000. So we got a lot of really expensive equipment in here to clean the DeLorean. Hey, Zeus is the man. Yes, sir. With the machine right now. Yeah, I am the machine. <laughs> <laughs> the air compressor is set up at 100 PSI right now. We can go okay. to 150. Okay. It's 300 CFM. Perfect. That's good, right? Yeah, okay, it's great, cool. actually. So the, this machine won't eat more. It won't eat that much of the CFM, but the more overhead you have, the more of these work in peak efficiency, the better. Even with the little machines that need like 30, 40 CFM, you hook it up to one of those, dude, they're just blowing through their stuff. You know All right. I mean? All right, we're going to treat this like cleaning your house top down. So we're going to start in these wheel wells, uh, and then we will get parts of the engine as well, which are super, super grimy. Super caked on. You ready? Yeah. So it's set really low. Let's do a nice safe test spot. Okay. <laughs> set the 50 PSI and 50 pounds of dry ice. So I'll let you go ahead and do it. Oh, wait, I'm doing this? Yeah, go ahead. I'm doing this. Yeah, All right, yeah, cool. Yeah. No so training needed. Safety trigger, right? Yep. Okay, So cool. you pull it, there'll be a little bit of a wind up. You want to do a pass to kind of get it cold and then a pass to clean it, right? Gotcha. That's the idea. Look at that, you can see like the fibers of the fiberglass. That is so clean. Oh my gosh, guys, this is super fun too. I might skip around here a moment. I just wanna see what it does to this frame. Yeah, like here? It yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's even better, Jason. Yeah. All right. And remember, you do have controls on the handle. Ah. So if you feel like you need a little bit more on, the top one will increase your PSI or decrease it. Okay. And the middle one will increase or decrease the amount of dry ice coming through. Gotcha. Don't press the bottom one, it'll dump out all the ice and you'll waste oh, like 50 Oh wow, months. why do they have that button there? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try out the epoxy on the frame. Look at that, that is so cool. Hold on a second, look at literally, this. Literally, it's cold. It is, yeah, <laughs> literally, literally, it is so cool. I wanna see what it'll do to this little bracket right here, let's see. Oh yeah, I mean, that that's the natural metal color right there. This wasn't painted silver or anything. Sweet, and what's great is it gets in all these little tiny areas that are hard to clean. That looks so good. Look at this frame. Nice. Oh my gosh, guys. This is gonna get intense. I mean, I just wanna ice the entire DeLorean right now. Whoa. All right, I think I went a little bit too fast on that one, but whoa. I'm gonna continue on here with the frame.
there's going to be parts of this where we have to put a different nozzle on but i think for efficiency purposes it's best to just, just do as it. much as you can do yeah. with this and then we'll come back and you later. can get most of it with that okay this is a really good before and after we have that's what it looked like before and that's what it looks like after and it's nice and cold all right shall we look at that <laughs> Jason says, yes, we must do it. <laughs> this is too much fun. My shop is going to be destroyed, but I don't care. No way. Look at that. Dude, I've seen the same viral videos that you guys have seen. And I'm always like, no way. Yes way, yes way, it works. Now I will say this, you gotta be gentle though, um, because it's shooting out pellets of ice. So there are parts of the car that you could ruin, engine harnesses, stuff like that. Really thin plastics as well. So definitely be careful if you're doing this yourself and also just, just have fun. So right now I'm gonna get this engine harness out of the way. It's easy to disconnect and then we'll hit up this area right here. I just held the camera, filmed that, and used the gun at the same time. It's it's easy to do and, and really fun. Man, you could seriously be out here for days. And I mean, we're, we're gonna be out here for one day with all of us, yeah, for sure. Oh, we got more stampings, cool. All right, hang on guys, hang on. I gotta show you the fins of this oil pan in real time. Look at this oil pan, people. So I dry ice blasted this and the bottom of the timing cover and a little bit in there. We're kind of bouncing around all over the place because we have only today to do this. Sometimes these guys will spend, you know, two or three days on a complete car. So I have to prioritize areas of the car that are gonna be difficult for me to clean later. So we're just kind of going everywhere. Right now we're back in the wheel wells. Let me show you what Jason did. Here is the passenger side. All the fiberglass is nice and cleaned up. And we're doing the frame as well. Got to go over this one more time, but looking pretty good. And something to point out is that a dry ice machine, although in a lot of these videos you see online, it looks like a miracle tool that just restores everything from the ground up. Uh, if there's rust, I mean, there's still rust. So this frame was coated in epoxy. It's very solid, but some of that has flaked away and there is surface rust. This isn't going to fix that. It will blast away a lot of the epoxy and reveal what's loose, which is kind of nice because later on, if I wanted to go through and kind of scrape stuff away and recoat it, I could easily do that. So that won't get done in this video. That's a whole nother, nother thing for later. But most of these DeLoreans will have that epoxy that kind of flakes off, doesn't look the best. It's kind of a blessing and a curse. It protects the frame, but it also can trap moisture in if it gets chipped. So anyway, we're going to continue on blasting and we have probably six or seven more hours to go. So I'm going to do a little dry ice blasting montage for you guys.
All right, we're gonna uncover what this says. What do you think it says, Jason? Uh, DeLorean. DeLorean. <laughs> All right. Look at this, 1367. I'll have to check the VIN, maybe that's, I don't remember, but maybe that's the car number. You have to subtract 500 from whatever the car number is on the VIN. That's just how they did it, the DeLorean thing. This is kind of just the reality of the world. This isn't a perfect car. The frame is very structurally sound, but by blasting away at the epoxy, it's gonna flake right off. And yeah, that's what you get. We're back at it. It's day two and we tried something last night before we wrapped up. We sprayed some degreaser on some of the parts of the car and we're gonna see if the dry ice is able to break up that really deep dirt and grime a little bit easier now. So you ended up having to rent the diesel air compressor for a second day because we wanted to get these results. One day just wasn't enough. Jason is over here going to town and look at this. This is already looking so good. So he's spending a lot of time in the webbing here of the transmission, these little nooks and crannies. And it was just really difficult to get into the corners, but the degreaser, it, it helped, right? No. It didn't? <laughs> no. It's just an hour. It is so caked in there. No, uh, it didn't do a thing. All right, so this was just a lot of time <laughs> from Jason. I, I had high hopes for the degreaser. He just shut me down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is the best way to get it, though. I mean, it's just like it's stuck on there. It's like yeah. hard and concrete almost. Right. So just time. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, anyway, it's looking good, degreaser or not. We're gonna try it out on the intake. Yeah, right in here, pretty grimy. See what the dry ice can do. It definitely cleaned up the pipe pretty well. A lot more work to do though. And we're gonna try this on an aluminum spindle now. It's definitely working and if this was on the car and you didn't wanna remove it to clean it, the dry ice would definitely be the way to go because you can get into all these little spots. So that's really impressive. So as I've shown you guys, the epoxy, really nice. But if it starts to flake, you get some surface rust on the frame, still totally solid. Um, but the dry ice is definitely gonna expose any weak coatings that are on your frame. So you gotta go in knowing that your frame may look better before the dry ice if it's in this kind of condition. So this is all really good metal. But right now what we're gonna do is crank up the machine all the way and see how much of this will come off because the fix for this outside of removing the entire frame and sending it to a company and spending thousands and thousands of dollars is to scrape off anything loose and then you can use a rust converter and then actually paint it with a brush or a roller with a gray metal paint. A lot of DeLorean guys do that. It looks really good. So anyway, let's crank it up. All right, so you can see this is a very solid part right here. We wouldn't need to scrape all of this off, but right in here, we've gotten to the weak point of the epoxy and we'll just keep going a little bit around here. A lot of these edges is what flakes off first. All right, that's perfect. Once you have to work at the epoxy for a long time, that means that's perfectly bonded. So we can stop right here. Now we have a nice edge that we can treat eventually. We are running low on the dry ice. And just to let you know, this is good for about a week in this blue cooler. So, and it looks really cool once you get it out into the heat. There we go. All right, we just finished up and we used a half tank of diesel. Shut her down. It's got, uh, I think about a 30 second shutdown period. 
close this valve up. And we are all out of ice. So this was $250 for 300 pounds of dry ice, but I did have to pick it up. It's a little bit more if you want it delivered. Jason's going around, OCD's kicking in. <laughs> He's just wiping stuff down. You know, th this is this is what it looks like though. I mean, I guess we could maybe get a buffer out here and like yeah. make that perfect. But I mean, look at the difference here though. Like this frame was just all caked up and nasty. And most of this frame is in excellent, excellent condition, which has me very, very excited. But the parts of the frame that aren't in excellent condition, like in here, have now been exposed thanks to the dry ice. So you can see here, uh, we ended up hitting all of these edges because I just, I wanted to see it all. I wanted to see the truth. And the truth is I have holes in my frame. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not good right here. Look at this. So the dry ice, I mean, it is very, very aggressive. So it pulled off all this epoxy and it even started to remove some of this rust in here. And although this hasn't become an issue on the DeLorean yet, nothing around here has weakened to the point of it bending or flexing because this is where the control arm goes. We definitely want to fix this. And this is kind of a common area of rust. I pointed it out in the very first DeLorean video when I didn't think it was this bad, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get this fixed and now we're on the driver's side and it's much better but there's still a hole here so i sent some pictures over to oj at fluid motor union and he immediately was like yes we can try and fix that and if there's anyone out there that can fix a rusted out delorean frame it is the fabrication team at fluid motor union so they're going to come out here to the shop cut some metal out and weld some new metal in and knowing them they'll probably make it stronger in the process in the next delorean video we're going to be fixing the frame and then i will be chipping away any other loose epoxy that we missed and we're going to be painting it and making it look really nice and and we'll be back in action hopefully because we are now deep into October and this car has to be done for Halloween and like right now I mean we literally have holes in the frame we have no steering suspension the engine doesn't run it's getting a little I'm intimidated at this point yes but uh but we will prevail we will get this on I am determined and dedicated I'm not doing anything else but sleeping a little bit before this DeLorean's done. But let's just take a moment to look at how clean the DeLorean is. This stuff here was just so, so nasty. But hang on, look at the work that Jason did on this transmission. We can see all of the numbers. He got into all the webbing. All the hardware looks really, really good. And this thing was just super, super caked up before. Now we can see what the aluminum was supposed to look like. The dry ice really did a number on these hard to reach spots. And the bottom of the car, which is mostly all fiberglass outside of the frame, looks brand new now. It's even got like a little sheen to it. You can really see all the little fiberglass fibers and it just looks perfect. Even the hardware we've cleaned up. It's still got its own little patina where DeLorean just kind of smudged up a little whatever this stuff is, but I like that kind of stuff. It's original. The wheel wells looked so bad before and look at how pretty they are now. This is a big deal because you see some of this in the background, especially with the factory DeLorean ride height, and it just looks horrible. So really happy with how the wheel wells came out. And as Jason continues to wipe, here's what the car looked like before. And yes, I use my office chair to roll back and forth and someone just kind of tugs me along. That's how we get this cinematic view that you're looking at now. Yippee! Faster, faster, faster! <laughs> and here is what it looks like after all of the dry ice blasting. We've probably removed a few pounds of dirt, grime, debris, grease, and all sorts of other DeLorean goodness and North Dakota earth. And actually here, I did a little bit of sweeping. There's one of our piles. There's another pile. This was all stuck to my DeLorean. Look at that. How much does it cost? Like if you had one of these bring a trailer type of cars and they just want a whole dry ice, kind of what's ballpark? A ballpark is anywhere from 200 to $300 an hour and you're spending anywhere from 10 to 50 hours. Yeah. It's a big cost. So I hope this video kind of helps you show the reality of dry ice blasting, where if you bring, especially like an antique car like this, it could uncover things that you might not know about or might yeah. not really want to know about that probably don't cause any real issues. Something to understand. You could spend a few thousand thousand dollars and end up learning a lot more about your car. So yeah. also, if you guys find a dry ice blasting place, make sure that they're willing to inspect the car before they work mm -hmm. instead of just taking your money and going to town. Like these guys would look at the car and give you the real, you know, kind of more realistic view of what's going to happen when they're done. So there's been a couple yeah. cars that we actually turned down because the, there was too much corrosion and rust yeah. and damage. Right. Like it wasn't worth it right. to do it. But there are plenty of shops that will take your money no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Big thanks to Chicago Auto Pros, Car Supplies Warehouse. You guys are absolutely amazing. I drop all of their information down below. All right, it's the next day and the shop is clean again. So we did a lot of a lot of damage here to the shop, but it's uh it's back. 
look at all the tools are away too. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go pick up a new LSC breast cancer awareness shirt link down below. 100% of the sale price of this shirt is going directly to the Susan G. Komen Foundation so we can cure breast cancer forever together. So with that, have an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next DeLorean video. Fingers crossed on the frame. of dry ice blasting, especially in an, yeah. Now we're currently done, uh, halfway done, okay. Everything's been sprayed down with penetrating oil for like a week or, everything's been, I forgot to spray this old crusty girl down. I don't know what that, some country talk right there. I forgot to spray this, <clears throat> I forgot to spray the upper shot, ah. I forgot to spray the, I forgot to spray the nut. With the back end all taken apart, we have to, um, yeah. With everything in the rear taken apart, we gotta start on the front. And this brake did, yeah. Dude, give your machine a break. Okay. Never heard a leaf blower at White Oak Throttle that long. Now it's time for everybody's fun part. My favorite part. A little old, old hydro, old fluid. Hydrophobic, hydroscopic, hydroscopic. Old hydroscopic fuel, fuel. That's pretty, that's pretty unavailable. So as I, so as I've shown you guys, so I've, uh, so as I've shown, ah.